we're going to look at uh, rate limiting per client. Essentially, you know, the idea is very simple and it's very intuitive. You want to provide unique limits uh, for different users that are accessing the service. Uh, and we'll get to a pretty complex version of this where potentially, you know, we, we would want multiple rate limits um, for the same remote address, uh, potentially to kind of enforce a, a usage plan over a long interval, but also prevent kind of bursts of traffic in smaller intervals. Uh, but I'm going to start uh, with the basics and, and shift into this demo. So let me first uh, I'm starting from really a blank slate. All that I've done is installed Glue CTL, and I've got uh, an empty GKE cluster uh, that, I've, uh, that I'm working with. And for the purpose of these demos, I'm just going to be using a little bit of shorthand in my command line K for kubectl and, and a few others. Uh, but as we can see, there's uh, nothing installed in this cluster. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is actually Glue CTL. Ooh. What I would recommend doing is glue CTL upgrade. It looks like we've got an issue with uh, being rate limited by the GitHub API, ironically. Um, but we'll, we can come back to that. But ultimately, uh, I've upgraded to the latest version of glue CTL, which you could grab from the releases page, um, just so that we're installing 1.4. So this is a new release that came out yesterday, uh, Enterprise Glue 1.4.0. Uh, we're going to use that today in this demo. And the first thing I'll do is actually just install uh, Glue Enterprise. So this will take a second. And while this is going, let's look at what we're going to um, be installing. So the first thing that I want to kind of talk through is what we're going to, in terms of the actual service that we're going to deploy, we're going to deploy this very simple service called Spelunker that's really just here for uh, helping us see what's going on. It, it helps show the example. and. With Glue, there's two bits of configuration we need to configure to set up a route through Envoy. Uh, so first, we need to define that service as a destination. And, and we can rely on Glue's discovery mechanism to automatically detect that service and to create that upstream destination for us. So you know, we actually only need to create the route to that destination. That part's already created for us. Um, oops, sorry using the uh, you know, out of the box discovery mechanism and glue. I'm also applying, so now I'm deploying that actual application Spelunker. And the second piece of configuration to get this kind of exposed through glue is the actual route. And that's, what, that's where you define a virtual service. So this is a very simple glue configuration that says um, to match on any domain, uh, and there's just a single route with a prefix slash. So really any path to any domain will match onto this virtual service. And this configuration just says forward that request to our Spelunker upstream. Uh, now that should take effect pretty quickly. We're going to use another convenience mechanism here um, so this, this is a glue CTL command to get the actual URL for the, the service. Uh, I'll show you where that's coming from in a second. Um, but as we can see, when we curl it, um, and actually I'll just turn that into a, you know, so when we curl this endpoint on any path, uh, we're getting forwarded and this is kind of the response of our Spelunker service. Uh, and just to get a sense of where that uh, IP address is coming from, I've deployed glue to uh, GKE cluster and using a load balancer service, this, this, um, our gateway proxy, our Envoy instance is actually assigned an external IP by Google's um, load balancers. And that's, that's, the UR, that's the IP address that uh, glue CTL has figured out to be the URL of our proxy. And so when we curl that, um, you know, it's essentially matching on that single route that we've configured forwarding to our service. So now the setup's out of the way, you know, we've got our single service, it's working well, and we can move on to kind of how we start to configure rate limiting for remote address. So let's take a look at what, um, actually before, before we get into the glue config, there are two things that we need to do to 
actually set up remote address forwarding. Um, something that we could note if we look at the response that we got from this curl request, um, our Spelunker service is um, conveniently printing out the request and the headers that it received. Uh, and something to note here is uh, this request is not, there's no indication to the service that this request is actually coming from me. And actually Envoy, you know, isn't really receiving my IP address, my public IP address at all. It's receiving the IP address. It looks like this request is coming from Google's load balancer. Uh, what we really want, and, and you know, and to, obviously we don't want to uh, rate limit based on which load balancer the request came through. We're trying to rate limit based, you know, for me. Um, and so what we need to do is set up the remote address and uh, get Envoy to be forwarding the correct uh, IP address of my address in the X uh, forwarded for header. So there's two bits of configuration we need to establish to enable that. The first is we want to tell Envoy's listener that uh, it should be using the remote address. So this is a configuration that essentially gets associated with the route that we had set up. Uh, and it just tells the connection manager to, 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 set, to set that up. Um, so we can patch our gateway object uh, with that configuration. Let me find my command here. The second thing that we need to do is we need to instruct the actual Kubernetes service uh, how to basically uh, that with a traffic policy so that it knows that, uh, you know, that this traffic is basically coming from through Envoy and it should also honor the X forwarded for uh, header. So we'll patch the actual Kubernetes service for Envoy uh, with this additional configuration. And that's what works in GKE with other cloud providers. It might require a slightly different uh, configuration. Now this takes a, a little bit or just a second to actually propagate. This is actually adjusting kind of how our Kubernetes cluster is behaving. Uh, but we should be able to see when this takes effect Uh, that the actual, uh, my public IP address is now preserved uh, all the way through to when the request hits the service. And that gives me, you know, once we see that, that'll give us confidence that uh, Envoy has the information it needs to properly uh, do rate limiting based on the specific client. While this is getting itself configured, I'm going to uh, just like jump ahead a little bit and talk through just what that rate limiting configuration looks like. Uh, so we're going to start with the simpler, uh, just like a simple version of this use case. Let's just say we want a specific rate limit per client. So, we're, you know, we'll get into having multiple ones, but to start, let's just say for any unique user, for any unique client, we'll allow five requests per minute. So first what we'll do is we'll, we'll patch our glue settings um, to set up that as a rate limit descriptor that basically establishes in our rate limit server that for this tuple, for this kind of unique client, in this case, it's a tuple of one, but it's the unique client address. Um, this is the limit to associate with it. Okay, as we can see, um, so jumping back, we, we, the, the service change finally took effect. Our requests are now going through, but they look a little different. What we now have going to our service is the actual X forwarded for with my public IP address, uh, which means that we now have Envoy properly forwarding and Google properly forwarding uh, the request as we expect, and we can rate limit on this header. Cool. So let me patch. So, you know, we, we know what settings we want, so I'm going to apply that as a patch. Now, that's not sufficient. So all I've done is set up the possibility of using rate limiting, um, but what I haven't done is actually apply it to our particular route. Um, so I've created, in other words, I've created the descriptors, I've made our rate limit server aware of these limits, but I haven't told uh, Glue that we should be kind of incrementing our, our counters uh, when it matches on this particular request. So that's the other half of the config that we need to actually apply. We can look at what that looks like so here was our original virtual service that created that route to our destination service. 
And now we'll just add this option to turn on rate limit. Um, and really the important part is here, all we're doing is rate limiting uh, based on a single kind of, you know, we're taking a single rate limit action, which means we'll increment a single counter for the tuple that is just our remote address. Um, so let's apply that. So now we should start to see rate limiting take effect. I think in that, um, in that configuration, I had a limit of five. So as we can see, I, I triggered it a few times on the sixth request, uh, we started to get a 429. And that's what we, that's what we want. That, that indicates that Envoy is properly rate limiting. Um, now we can get some insight uh, uh, into uh, what the rate limit server is actually doing and the current value of counters. But we'll get into that in a little bit. Um, for now, I wanted to I wanted to prove that this is actually working per kind of unique client. Uh, so to do that, I'm going to actually what I would like to do is be, is issue a few curl requests to the service, but from a different IP address, so from a different client. Um, and to do that, I'm just going to um, actually. Uh, navigate like SSH into our cluster into one of our boxes that happens to have curl installed. So I'll be running this essentially from the node, uh, the, the public IP address of the node rather than my own personal IP address. Uh, let's continue, you know, let's make sure this stays rate limited, we can actually uh, do something like that. So we're slamming the server now. Um, but what we should see, oh, I need to, uh, So now we can see um, our original, you know, the client from my machine is being rate limited, but we're able to continue to issue requests from a different unique client. So we can see that this is working as we expect. But that wasn't really sufficient for our use case. So this is a great start, but what we really want to express are two different limits. Um, in practice, maybe we've got, you know, a single plan that gives an overall quota. Uh, let's say, you know, 100,000 requests per month, uh, but we may want to limit our, our traffic in verse so that they don't all appear, you know, on the same day or in the same hour. Um, we'll simulate that here by just having uh, a specific kind of uh, rate limit per, per minute and then another one per second. Uh, so what we're essentially doing is we're now kind of taking two actions. Right? We're setting up two different descriptors, two different quotas um, off of the same remote address. Uh, with, a, with, with a per minute and a per second kind of key to differentiate them. And on the glue config side on, the, on our route, uh, we'll take both actions. So we'll increment the per minute kind of quote, uh, quota and per second uh, every time that this route is hit. And then we should be able to see both um, kind of rate limits take effect. So first I'll patch the settings to kind of create those descriptors. And second, I'll apply our actual virtual service. Um, and to see this, we probably need to go back and uh, issue a bunch of requests, but we can, you know, this is a little hard to read, but if we, if we kind of look back through the history now, what we're seeing is, you know, some requests go through as we expect. So we get a 200, you know, 200, but we do start to get rate limited because for each second, we're only allowed one request. Uh, and then, you know, we see some work, but at a certain point, we'll hit our, our overall quota, our, our per minute quota, and then every request is getting rate limited at that point. So as we can see, we're, we're kind of able to kind of work with both of these different limits. We can see them both take effect. Um, and in this way, we can start to create much more kind of nuanced, complex rules that better uh, reflect the usage plan that you might want to set up with your users when you're kind of selling your APIs. So that's about it for the first demo. I'm going to go back to just to kind of summarize that use case. What we did is, you know, first we took a look at just how to rate limit based on unique client and we proved that it was working. Um, but more, more realistically, we, we learned how to create several different limits per user uh, to kind of 
create a usage plan that better reflects both long-term quotas and kind of short-term uh, constraints in terms of burst traffic. Uh, 